Hi everyone, Susie here from Minnesota and I garden in a zone 4B and I'm taking you on a tour of my flower containers in June. And just in this container down here, I have hostas. I just planted this up with caladium corms and I have the sticks there just to hopefully prevent the squirrels from digging. This is just a hookra that I had started from seed melting fire coral bells. A type of Tradescantia. A Swedish ivy. It's in the 80s today. Humidity is pretty high. Um, Tuesday they're talking, I think 95, and then by the weekend, uh, 99. It's a far cry from the 60s and 70s we've been having. These plants are going to throw a fit. They're not used to that, and that came on real quick. I have a lot of containers. This year I went to town on them just because uh, next year my focus will be elsewhere with creating sun garden beds. And that this little deer has some more caladiums in it, so wherever you see this, I just planted it up yesterday. I figured the heat's coming and they'll love that. In my zone, uh, they say about the middle of June is when you should start planting caladiums since they're tropical plants and they like it warm. And here I just have a trailing catmint. I love it. I have a lot of this. And just some begonias back here. If there are any plants that you want to know the names of, just let me know and I will get back to you. Sometimes I don't always remember where I put the takes or if I've labeled anything. And I still have violas in Willard down here. That's the name of this turtle planter. I'm going to see if they make it. I'll give them a couple weeks, see what happens with this heat we have. All my pansies are gone. They were not looking the best, unfortunately. This is a huge whiskey barrel, and I had I had gone to a plant sale in May, and I bought a bunch of hostas because I had some plants for them and them. And I found out that my trees had to come down, so now I'm kind of like, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. So I just put them in containers for the time being, but I have a lamium. And then also more of the hookra that I started from seed in here. I have so many. Isn't this one beautiful? So this is just a perennial container. A very simple. To back out of my garden here. But I do like that. There's something about that hoop right there. I don't know the name of it because it just came in a package of seeds called hybrids. Kind of looks like spearmint, but a little different. This is a Sheldon. It's my turtle planter. More of the violas. He's getting covered up, but that's okay. And then where you see this, where I have these on, that's also more caladiums. So hopefully within about a week here, I can take those off. Just bare soil with squirrels is not a good thing. More of the Tradescantia. I do have some caladiums planted here. We'll see if they come up before this really fills in. It's doing really good over here. It's really neat. And one of my these are one of my hostas, uh, Bridal Falls, that I just have in a container. And I just think it looks unbelievable. Love that. more caladium so by the time I do the July container tour <laughs> maybe they'll be up let's see 
local. Oh, oops. There was a ladybug on my finger. And in here, more of that trailing cat mint, which is very aggressive, but I love how it cascades. It's becoming one of my favorites. And then more seeds I started Hookra. The palace purple, I just thought it would look really nice in here. This year I went to town on foliage plants. I don't know. But I love foliage, so. Sorry about that wind. But it does feel lovely. And then in here I just have Tahitian Bridal Veil along with more Tradescantia. These were cuttings of mine. They burned a little bit, so we'll see. That They'll be good here in a little bit. And more of the Palace Purple Hookara. And then just repeat it over here. I think the one on the right, the Hookara. I have a feeling the squirrels got in there and kind of nipped that crown off because it, it should be bigger than that. And just in this container here, I just have Sun Patience. I think it's tropical white. I think that looked really good in here. I was thinking about putting some caladiums, but I feel like this will fill in before the caladiums have a chance to come up. I have some containers that are thriller, filler and spillers, and others that are just kind of on their own. And then just repeat it down here. Like I said, I just love this. A watering usually takes me about half an hour because I usually leave my hose out and then it's pretty quick. If I'm using rain water from my rain barrel, then it takes me a little bit longer. But that doesn't go a long way, so I usually focus on the containers closest to the rain barrel. And this, oops, we'll go over to this. I forgot these. I've got a coleus in here. Again, if there's names that you were wondering about with the coleus, just let me know. And I will get back to you. And then back here when I planted this up, this shrub here was not this tall. It was probably about a foot and a half. So I have a coleus in there along with a dahlia. And there's other stuff in there. I, it's just going to get shaded out. But we'll see what happens here. More caladiums. I don't ever buy caladium plants. They're too expensive. And um, I mean, the fact that I'm in Minnesota and I can get caladium sugar, I say that. Who knows? But they like the heat. But I think it's a lot easier doing the corms. It saves a lot of money. And then in here, these are just plants I started from seed. Calamintha, just white. can't really see them. I'm, we'll see how I like them in there. Usually I like to go with Diamond Frost Euphorbia. But it was a little difficult to find this year. And just um, Alyssum and Wanda, my fish planter. And a lot of these were just planted up. It's going to take a bit. Oh, I went past that hanging basket, didn't I? Just in here, and I don't know if it's going to do anything before this heat comes. This is Celine Sabella Carmine, just seeds I started. I mean, it's branching out really nicely. And then I have, I watered everything today heavily. And then uh, Dusty Miller, um, another seed I started. And the Dichondra Silver Falls that I started from seed is, it's doing okay. But the birds like to peck at that. I'm, 
So that's why it looks really scraggly. I don't know what it is about that plant that they like to just... I don't know. But we'll see what happens. Things are filling in nicely, so I don't think I have to worry too much about replanting. Because I have more here. And then this definitely looks a lot better. We'll see. I'm probably going to have to water this one at least twice a day whenever we get that hot. Over here I just kind of have a small moon garden going. I wasn't planning on it, but then I just I thought, hmm, you know, this gets full sun, why not? This is a scavola. And more Calamintha, the white, along with Dusty Miller on the sides, cut in the middle. And then in back, that's a Datura, Ballerina White. And I just have a Geranium in here, or a Pelargonium. Just a white one, and there's only one in here, along with the Senecio. So I really like that. I have a slow release fertilizer in all my containers and I do like to use or reuse old potty mixes and just because it's cost efficient. In here I started this from seed. This is a butterfly bush. Is that not neat that it's blooming already? I have three in here. It might be too much but I can just kind of prune away at it but yeah I'm like I can't I was so excited when I saw that this is Berwalia blue lady it gets huge and then it cascades so it's doing really good here this one is a bergamo a bee balm it said it takes about what, 10 weeks from seed to bloom. Sure is taking its sweet time. It definitely filled out this container, so there is that. So I'm, I'm hoping I see some blooms this year. And that is just uh, daily I serve from seed. It's, it's a little yellow, but I just planted that. It was in the can too long. This container right here is, this is kind of my um, 4th of July container. Hopefully it is blooming by the time 4th of July is here. So this is my red. And then this is supposed to be a blue salvia. So fingers crossed. And then Orlea in the back. And I figure if the Orlea is not blooming and it's white, then at least the Dusty Miller can be kind of my white plant in there. So we'll see, it's, it's filled out really nicely. Where you see this, it's um, I was a little quick at hardening it off, so it's a little scorching on there, but it should pull through. And then I have a Persian shield over here. And down here, I just have to keep an eye on it. I've been having some aphid issues with my roses, and I know aphids really like this plant. I only have one in it, it will fill out. And more caladiums. I'm kind of in certain areas I'm keeping to a, a color theme. And then down here is just a coleus. And then along with the sweet potato vine. Absolutely love that. And just have to watch that because I know it's prone to bug issues too. And then a palace purple hookra. Love these begonias. They just glow.
and then in this container here. I think this is, I have my tags right here, so this one I can get to. This coleus here is a kiwi fern. And then I just put some more melting fire coral bells in there, more of my seeds. And then this right here is just a sedum golden lemon. Alabama sunset coleus. And this is pineapple beauty. So I can't wait to see how that fills out. So when I ordered my caladiums, I kind of went crazy. I did 50 of each, and I have three kinds. Unfortunately, the one kind that I ordered, they gave me a, a smaller quorum. They, they asked my permission first, but so they gave me 100 instead of 50. Planting 100 is, yeah, I had to figure out where I was going to plant. I did. I got them all planted, but that's why you will see a lot of caladiums hopefully come up in the next tours. This is just coffee cups. It's an elephant ear. I love it. I did plant some caladiums kind of in the front here. So we'll see if those come up. And again, this is just another hosta of mine. Um, this was around my kennel area where they were working, the people, and I didn't want them to step on it. And it's one of my favorites. And I was going to plant some stuff on it, the, and then it filled in, and then I think it's perfect in this whiskey barrel, the half whiskey barrel. I love this right here. And this is a Plectranthus, along with the Tahitian Bridal Veil, and all of this should, well, this should cascade. I'm not sure on the growth of this, but this is definitely proven to be very vigorous. This is Zulu Wonder over here, but most Plectranthuses are uh, very aggressive along with three types of coleus. And this is where my tags are way back there. That was kind of dumb of me, but I can't get to them. But look at that purple, purple black. It's just unbelievable. I think this just, this is kind of my cool area. And then here, this is a kiwi lime elephant ear. So it's definitely taken them a bit, but they don't like the cool weather. So they're definitely going to like this heat coming up. So I can't wait to see how they do. And this is just a um, Lysimachia, Midnight Sun. I'm hope I kind of put some back here so it just kind of cascades over this whole container. And hopefully it covers the container here in about a month. This is just where I have some house plants. Uh, the my ponytail palm back here, I had on the ground because I was hardening it off. I had it inside for the longest time, and then I saw I think a rabbit came by and nipped off a lot of the blades. So I have to be careful with that. Uh, more. I went to town on this. I had an idea, and I didn't think it was going to work. So that's my sister's. I potted it up. And she hasn't taken it back, so it's going to stay out here until she wants it. More caladiums. This is so fun to touch. It's nice and soft. This is called Pink Belly. Really like that. I thought this was so pretty. They didn't have any of these in four inch containers. And this is just a begonia, but they had it in this size. But this makes kind of a cute little tabletop centerpiece. Love that color. Um, I had a tag somewhere. I really like that. I love those colors though. Over here I just have, um, it's an Acerina. I think it's just a mix, so I'm not sure what color the blooms are going to be. It was looking really tough, and finally it's kind of bounced back. And some of um, the seeds that I served were in their cans just too long. 
And I love this area over here. Most of these are seeds I started or cuttings. A few of these plants I bought, just a few. I'm just, I can't wait to see all of them fill out. I don't know how well the snapdragons are gonna do in the heat, but this is supposed to be a peach color. It's, it's definitely not, but it's really different and I like it. I think it goes with this area along with an agastache. I think it's lavender hyssop and the bees love it. I bought this grass here, it was, it's called Jester. Um, yeah, this is a bit, <laughs> but hey. Down here, this is one that I really like, and this is Limone Talinum. It, uh, the leaves, I can't explain, it feels like a succulent. So, can't wait to see what these flower heads look like. And more Purple Prince Alternathra. This is one I bought, this is a Kufia Honeybells. Just love. I think it'll look really good with all the colors over here. And then a Coleus. Back here I have Black Eyed Susan Vine. It's called Blushing Susie. It's taken a bit, so it is just starting to climb. So I have, I have five in there, but again, they're really tiny. I don't know how this is going to work. These are seeds. I started. This is a penstemon. I said you can grow it as an annual, but it's taken its sweet time. It's looking better, but I'm going to give it another two weeks. If not, I'll probably put something else there. Because it should be, I was hoping about three feet tall. And just uh, melting fire coral bells. I had so many ahead from seeds, so I just thought, you know what? They'll, they'll do good. Dusty Miller, I think it's silver dust. Oh, I have just a zinnia here. I forget, uh, is it apricot perfusion? This one's really neat too. This is taken a bit, but finally, again, this is Joey Lamb's tail. Is that not neat? And again, it's, the leaves are really thick. It feels like a succulent. This is a castor oil bean. And just a foliage plant, very poisonous. I think it's New Zealand purple. Another agastache. Probably should deadhead this, but there's lots of new growth coming and I kinda, it's still cute but this one is going over, but that's okay. I repeated the Kufia honeybells. This gets huge, like wide, so I will probably have to move these containers a bit to accommodate the size of certain plants, but that's okay. And all of these just have one type in it. More of the Dusty Miller, I know there's nothing wow about it, but I like it just to kind of break up certain colors. It's doing really good. And I have another of the Limon Telenum there. I should have just switched containers here, but that's okay. And this is a rose. Snapdragon. So this is a really pretty color. And what can I say about this pelargonium? It's uh, it's like a coral. It's not red, it's coral, hopping, I can't, it's just definitely a showstopper. Um, I wouldn't want more than this in this area because it's definitely a focal point here. And I feel pairing with the Dusty Miller just kind of helps maybe tone down that color a bit, but it is gorgeous. I love it. And I have more coming, so. So far, I'm doing pretty good about growing it. Another coleus. And then isn't this neat? This is a daily I started from seed. Look at the colors on this. And it's just doing so good here. One of the branches did break off, but that's okay. But I have a lot of blooms coming. This coleus here, I might have to bump that up into a bigger container. It's in a I was running on a pot. And then the one pot that this is on does not have drainage holes. 
but there's a big crack in it, so I figure if I try to put some holes in it, I might break the pot. But yeah, I think I might move that into a bigger one. And I just, I love this area. I still have some more of my cuttings. They're kind of backup plants. There are some storms predicted, otherwise we've been pretty dry. So I'll appreciate the rain, but the storms just make me, lately the storms that we've been having have been high winds and lots of hail. All right, over here, more, uh, yep. The Dusty Miller Silver Dust. I just love these colors together. And this is a salmon. And this is loving its life over here. I mean, look at... The slow-release fertilizer I'm using is Osmocote. Not sponsored by anyone, but I can get a big bag of it from Amazon, and I love it. Would not have container without the Osmocote. There are other varieties out there, and they work just as well, I'm sure. And this is a eucalyptus. This is not neat. And this is Tattoo Tangerine Vinca. Look. And it's got that dark purple, and I think it'll look nice with the Purple Prince Alternathra and play off the salmon color of the Pelargonium. love this. Actually, I like everything this year, and I'm just having a really fun time with containers. I always do plant up a lot, but this year I did a little bit more. And this, I just have the pink dragon wing begonia. Um, this faces west, but it only gets probably about four hours of sun. Maybe five tops. So it, it's not something you would call a full sun area, but the sun beats off the side of the house and kind of, yeah, it's a little intense. Along with the quarter line, look how pink that is. And then I have caladiums planted in amongst here. Hopefully they can hold their own before all this really grows in. I know I've seen some starting to come up, but in this black container against the house and the west sun, yeah, it gets really hot. And then the dichondra silver falls. And then all three of them are planted like that. So yeah, look at, I mean, I'm hoping the camera is picking up the beauty of this. I just oh, love it. All that was on the tag was, uh, did I say cordeline? Cordeline. So it didn't say the variety, unfortunately. So I'm hoping these get about up to here. That would be nice. Taller would be better, but just I get a lot of wind this way. And then I pulled out all of the pansies that I had started from seed. And in here I just, yep, you guessed it, more caladiums. So yeah, so those are my containers. I never know if I'm going to add any more. It's still early in the season. I think it's the 12th of June. I usually like to have most of my containers planted up by the middle of June just to make sure that they have a, a good chance to look really good by the end of the season. I hate saying that. But even with these cooler temps, we, and the cool temps when I talk, it was uh, high 60s, low 70s. So nice thing is hopefully they've got a good root system before this heat comes, and some of these plants should absolutely love the heat. I love container planting because I can control the moisture, I can control the fertilizer, and I can move them around if they're getting too much sun or not enough sun, so there is that too. And I do, I, I don't have anything set up on drip, I just go around, water everything. I love to water, 
It just also gives me time to inspect the plants and also deadhead at the same time. So it's just, to me, it's very therapeutic. And a lot of these plants don't need as much water as others and also fertilizer. So yeah, I just, there's something about container gardening that I absolutely love. So hopefully you enjoyed. Um, bye for now.